All right, let's continue our conversation on Stoicism, going over the Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. Um, I, I was a bit hesitant on whether or not to include this specific section. This is book 11, section 5, because I feel that we have talked about this a couple times, and I don't want to sound too repetitive, but on the other hand, I think it is good once in a while to come back to these, these very basic principles. It's a short section. Number five, what is your profession? Being a good man. But this can only come about through philosophic concepts, concepts of the nature of the whole and concepts of the specific constitution of man. <clears throat> so just, just as a very quick reminder, remember that in Stoicism, the most important thing is virtue, doing the right thing. The opposite of virtue is vice, and then in between, those two things are the indifference, preferred or uh, dispreferred indifference. Things that in themselves are indifferent to virtue, but depend on how they are used. For example, money. Money is neither good nor bad. It depends on how you use it. So, what I like about Marcus Aurelius is that, of course, the meditations were not meant to be published. It was, we, we know that, it was a either a diary or something like a set of, of philosophical exercises. There are different theories on that. In any case, there's a reason the book is called To Himself in, in Greek, right? So, having said that, Marcus Aurelius has a couple of themes in my mind that he keeps coming back to. And I've read the meditations a number of times. And the, the more you read it, the more obvious it becomes. Right, so so one theme in my mind is the the ephemeral nature of everything. Everything comes to an end. Marcus Aurelius talks about death and dying a lot, talks about the end of life, talks about being prepared that your life at any point may end. Another thing he, he talks about either explicitly or kind of when you read between the lines is the austerity of life and how he his life how he he doesn't really want to be an emperor uh, but that he has to be an emperor that he has to do good uh, that he well maybe that's not the, the right way to put it that he has to do it because he wants to do good so if you're going to do it then he may as well do it as well as you can which in itself i think is a very good attitude like if you're going to do it anyway then then give it your best effort no matter what it is whether it's cooking your dinner or helping someone cross the street or or doing your job whatever but whatever you choose to do then also put effort into it and i think a lot of times these days people forget about that part they, they will just do something but that's either not thought through or there's no effort into it or both um or neither so there is that another theme <clears throat> i think is how much he hates people He's, he's painfully explicit at many parts in the book about how, how much he dislikes people, but that it's impossible not to deal with people, especially in his position. I mean, again, put yourself in the position of a Roman emperor. You meet a lot of people, you interact with a lot of people, and pretty much all those people who come to talk to you want something out of you, right? So it's, it's, it's not even like you, you're a, a normal mortal, so to speak. You are the Roman emperor. Everybody wants a piece of you, wants something from you. And then here, another theme <clears throat> that I think is, is really quite powerful is the theme of be good, right? Do good. We've talked a little while ago about the, the, the often quoted but, but well-known section of stop talking about what it means to be a good person. Be one. Be a good person. Well, here, <clears throat> this section, I think he... He puts it again very briefly, but in a very nice, clear way. What is your profession? Being a good man. That, I think, supersedes everything. So if you put this again in the perspective of Marcus Aurelius, Marcus Aurelius is the emperor of Rome. And when we talk about, quote-unquote, the West... He was the most powerful man alive at that point in time, in the West, right? He ruled, from the Western perspective, the known world. The Roman Empire was huge, and he was in charge 
of everything and everyone in it. And then when he asks himself, what is your profession? He does not say, I'm the emperor. He does not say, I'm the leader of all our armies, at least nominally so. He does not say, I'm the head of the Senate or anything along those lines. He said, being a good man, that's my profession. Which is surprisingly humble. Now, uh, it's always interesting to, to mention a few things, I think, in that, in that regard. For example, the fact that he never abolished slavery. Um, so we can debate on how, how good a man he was. I think he tried to work with what he had. But having said that, he could absolutely have tried to abolish slavery. But anyway, uh, not, not, not to, to make light of that, also not to, to just move past that, but also not to focus the entire discussion for today on that, because it, it simply did not happen. He did not do that. My concern more so lies with this philosophical principle. What is your profession? I mean, right now, right, for these videos. That's all I'm saying. To be a good man. And I think he would agree with to being a good person, right? Okay. So, how about the idea that we start off there? That whatever we, we strive for, I happen to be a psychologist, uh, I, I happen to be a college instructor, I could use those terms to describe myself. If someone asked ask me, could you, could you tell me something about yourself? I could say, well, I'm a psychologist, I'm a college instructor, I'm, I'm a, you know. How about you, you dial that back a little bit and you start first with, I'm a good person. Now, if you say that to someone that probably going to come across, I would imagine, pretty arrogant, but think about it. What if you strive to do the best you can with what you have in every context you're in, right? I do my best when I'm cooking. I do my best when I'm doing my job. I do my best when I'm in traffic to pay attention, to not be annoying to any other, any other people. But beyond that, there's an overarching thing. I do my best to be a good person. You can try to be a good father. I'm not a father. But you understand what I mean, right? But one step higher, you're trying to be a good person. And I think if everyone would approach life in that way, the world could look very, very different from what it looks like now. I'm not trying to be, uh, trying to be a hippie about this, but think about what that means. Think about what this could mean for your life. I am trying to be a good person, period. And I think that the Stoics, and it's not just the Stoics, there are other schools of philosophy as well. You can also think of the Cynics. The Cynics, in some ways, in many ways, I think were even more hardcore than the Stoics were, and to them virtue was the most important thing. Right? It was the most, most important thing. The only thing that matters is virtue. I'm not quite saying you have to lead your life or live your life like that. But what if you wake up and the first thing you tell yourself in the morning is, today I'm going to try to be a good person. I would find it very hard to believe if you make a genuine effort at actually doing so, that you would not be liked as a person. It doesn't mean bending over backwards for people and taking all sorts of abuse, that's obviously not what I'm saying. But you do your best to be a good person, to be kind, to be helpful, to look out for other people. And if you can do that, I emphasize, without being taken advantage of, but if you can do that, I would find it hard to believe that you would not be very happy, or at least happy, or at least content in life. Because you're doing what you can with what you have in every situation you're in. And it's such a simple thing to remember. That can be your profession, employed or not. I'm trying to be a good person. 
And how wonderful would it be if at some point you're no longer in this world and people say about you, he, she, that person was always a good person. They always helped out others. They were so well loved and respected for who they were, for their actions, not just their words, but for their actions. They really were a good person. These are my thoughts for the week. Let your profession be to be a good person. Try that for a week and then see what happens and crosses your path. I'm not saying that there is some sort of karma situation here that if you do good, you. Will, I, I'm not saying that. But I do think that if you genuinely try to be a good person, there's a good chance that you'll be pretty content in life. Let me know how it works and what you think. And I'll gladly see you later, next week, for more talk about stoicism. Bye!